Hey. What is the implication of this? We need to go around one more before we. What is the implication of this? If this is who we are, yes. Prof. The implication is just like the song we just sang. It is time you totally surrender yourself to Christ. Number one, to discover who you are. Peter said to Christ, you are the, the Christ, the son of the living God. And the Lord now said, now that you know me, let me tell you who you are. You are Peter. Rock. You need to discover there's an area of life God has made you a rock. Find it. The moment you find it, you find God's grace waiting for you. Number two, Every manifestation of kinship requires skills. You must develop those skills. It was not the day that David was anointed king. It was not the same day he started manifesting. He needed time to develop both the character and the functionality. You need both. You need character. And that for you to develop character, be ready for Saul to chase you around for a season. Hello. In that chasing around, you're de developing ruggedness. You know, you're developing character, you're maturing. But you also need to learn the functionality of kinship. That's why it's important to go and submit yourself to be trained every training program you know pastor david you know, do you know that since you started the po the post um encounter encounter i mean i do fasting but that was another level for me i've done four of that with you and i plan to do more and i've noticed that when you develop certain capacity authority is released to you commensurate with that capacity God will never give you authority beyond the capacity you have already developed. So you are ultimately the one limiting yourself. Train yourself as fast as you can and you'll see what God will do with you. That's my advice to you. Clap well, oh. God has made us kings. Uh, Old Testament will say he has made you the head, not the tail. He has made us above. So, what kind of competencies is required to be the MD of your company? Develop it now because that's where you're going. What kind of competencies to be the one running that whole company where you are just a staff? Develop it now because that's where you're going. What kind of competencies is required by the, the highest set of leadership in your organization? Develop it because that's where you're going. You are not waiting for promotion first, then you start struggling. No. Now, you want to be a governor, you want to be a, a senator, you want to be a president. Those are part of the things that are ahead of you. Because you are the head. We are going to look at every phase of society. What is required to turn it around? The answer is in the church. Now that you have known who you are, you can't live the ordinary life anymore. So, which field is your field? Is it government? Is it public service? Is it education? What kind of competencies are required? Because you see, there is capacity. This authority and dominion has been given. But there is also capacity building required to be able to function well. You don't want to get in there and fail God and it failed the church also. You can't do that. We can't misbehave like Adam again. So what kind of competencies in your business that will make you the biggest man in that area? You are a potting tire or you are selling this. You are running a supermarket. How do you become the biggest supermarket in the whole of Lagos and then you franchise it all over Nigeria and send it all over Africa? What kind of competencies? What does it take? 
What is it that made McDonald's a global plan? Go and learn it now. This next 10 years is so critical for Africa and for the black race. We don't have any week to waste. We don't have a month to waste. God wants to do things that has never been done in history with black people. Yes. Now, of course, with everybody all over the world, I know you are watching, but I'm also talking to our people here who has been on the backside. God is no respecter of person. He's not only for white, he's not only for black, he's God for the whole universe. He's God for every man. But Africa has been on the backside for too long. There is a gospel that redeems but empowers a people. The dominion gospel is the strong man's gospel. It's not just to redeem you to go to heaven. It's to entrust you with leadership, with responsibility to go help make things happen. To go and change things. It's the gospel that entrusts you not only with salvation, but with kingship and priesthood to go and begin to redeem your society. Pastor David, yes, can yes, I add yes, something sir. here? And, and please pay attention. The last statement Pastor David made was not a careless statement. He said God is going to use black people. In fact, Pastor David, a word came to us three weeks ago. A prophetic word. Prophetic word. He says, the moment I've been talking about is here. It is here. He says, it is not that it will come, it has come. And the Lord said this, I'm going to use you, and write this down, to create witty inventions. He said that some of us are mesmerized by current technology. He said, it is nothing. What I'm about to unveil through my kingdom is nothing compared to what you see. Now, when the Lord said that to me, of course, I know he's speaking about us in general. I knew that there's no way he can talk about invention with me when I don't even understand what currently exists. Because invention means changing what exists, understanding the current systems. And God say, this one you understand, Using it as a foundation, I'm going to give you more insight. That In means you go from originality, you go from imitation, imitation to, originality. to originality. You understand what is happening first. Exactly. If it's the security architecture of Nigeria, you need to study. That's where you want to in exactly. intervene. Study what is going on, understand it very well. Then God cannot give you innovation on how to meet the mis you know, fix the missing part what to do, what to do, and then when you come to consult for a governor or for government, you will be able to come with practical solutions. Exactly. And sir, it, yes, means, go ahead. it then means that this new era is not for lazy people. It's not for mentally lazy people. They are for people who are ready to devour knowledge. So, I want to appeal to you. Diligence is your watchword in this season. Diligence. This yes. night, there are seven special anointings that will be poured out here. You need to see what happened in Enugu, but Lagos is going to be the culmination. You're going to have the best of this whole camp meeting. It's going to, yes, I, I, we'll even get to talk about it. I will see if we can a little, but this night, but uh, let's come to you. You know, so, this thing that we are in this position, what does it mean practically now? What, when we live here, what do we do with it? Okay, let me build up, sir. Thank you so much. Um, in fact, thank you for this camp meeting. For me, this has been a revolutionary as well. And please say thank you. That revelation you brought, I have taught believers authority, but I have added a lot from what you shared. <laughs> it's important because revelations of God are progressive. And they come season after season. Because of what God wants to do. Now that we have been made kings, supreme beings, is positional. 
we need to grow into it. David was anointed king over Israel, but he has to grow into it. It took him some time to grow into it. He was anointed and called a valiant man, a man of war. When, when they came to talk to Saul about him, they said he was a valiant man, a man of war. He has not fought, fought any battle. In the spirit, this is the position. Yes. But you need to become it. God, you know, when you become a redeemer, then you can begin to redeem men. They don't make you a governor. You say, I need to grow into it. You are a governor. They don't make you a president. You say, I need to grow into it. They don't make you inspector general of police. And then you want to grow into it. What are you doing growing into it? Mm -hmm. Science is But what you now need to do is to learn how the to power do. of the office. Right, right. What this office can do. And how to start exercising it. And part of it is to study what other presidents, what other people that occupy the office have done. That's why sometimes in revival studies or this post encounter, we take you to God's generals. The book of Acts is an example of what can be done. And then we have modern generals. Now, then but what God is trying to do now is even beyond what he has done. But like we are saying, start from imitation. Start from what has happened to learn. Once you make this discovery, the, what is left is functionality. You don't need to grow into You don't grow into authority. Let me tell you. If I bring the smallest, youngest boy here now, maybe 12 year old boy, and we ordain him pastor, senior pastor of Dominion City, the overall general overseer, and he's ordained. Moment that ordination service end, he is that man. If you want to clap, clap. Oh. Take the youngest bishop in the Catholic Church, the youngest, and Pope has just died, and they need a new Pope. The moment the conclave finishes. And they bring out. They say he's the youngest bishop. Or maybe he's even just whatever. But we have just voted. And he has been ordained the Pope. Once he comes out. He sees that white smoke. And he waves that he is the Pope. All the authority. All the whatever is in him. Now he might not know. The capacities the different dimensions of what. So, usually there are people they put around him in Vatican to help. That's what we are doing for you now. There are books, for example, Authority of the Believer. There are books on priesthood because you have two offices. You have been sworn in as a governor. You want to grow into it. Growing into what? And people are dying. You can create jobs. You can commission roads. You can, you can push in money into education. And monthly allocations are coming every month to this. And you, you want to grow. That's when you want to attend Harvard for four years. By the time you return, another person is taking office. You need counselors. You need mentorship. You need more information about your office. But you are it. That's why the capacity building side because there are some aspects of the manifestation. Okay, look at leadership skill. That young boy now, he has been made Pope. How do you manage diversity? Africans, manage Europeans, manage America. When some people want to start gay movement, what do you do as a Pope? When some people want to do, what do you do? Okay, the universal church, how do you relate with them? Other branches of the church, Anglican church. And then, okay, how do you relate with other religions, Islam and the rest of them? You have a lot of things. Your office deals with. How do you deal with heads of state? If a U.S. president wants to come for, how do you do all that? He might not have all that knowledge. He might have been in his parish pastoring. That's why a lot of them go for all kinds of training, have PhD in this, have this, they study this, because you don't know. Whether it's going to be you. 
But in our case, we know that we are the one. Tell me a few more things as I close about this authority. What can we do with it? Thank you, sir. There's something you shared with us, sir, that, um, you know, that blew my mind. The pastor showed us that the places this authority was mentioned in the Bible, it was mentioned in conjunction with the Great Commission. An example in Matthew chapter 28, you know, where Jesus said, okay, please, Matthew 28 from verse, Matthew 28 from verse 18. 18. You know, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power or all authority is given unto me in heaven and in the earth. Then verse 19. It now says, Go ye therefore, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so here authority was mentioned, and the next thing, it was connected to the Great Commission. If you also go to Mark chapter 16, I think from verse 15. Mark chapter 16. Mark 16 from verse 15. Mark 16 from, from verse 15. It's, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to what? Every creature. He that believeth, verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Then verse 17. In her says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Then it connects us to authority again. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Then if you go down, verse 18. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Okay, so what pastor showed us is that one of the major reasons why God gave us authority is to advance the Great Commission. Okay, so it's one thing to use authority for yourself to bind the devil, destroy poverty, destroy barrenness in your life. Praise the Lord. But, when Jesus died on the cross, he paid for the salvation of the whole world. When he suffered sickness, he suffered the sicknesses of the whole world. And the same way, when they brought deliverance, he also brought deliverance of the whole world. So, everything that Jesus died and paid for is not just for us. It's also for the world. Okay, so authority was given to us to enforce these things in our lives and also to bring it to pass, enforce it in the lives of every other person that Jesus died for. Praise the Lord. So, if you read Psalm 82, Psalm 82 said, Ye are gods. Ye are gods. All of you are children of the Most High. But he said, Because they know not, neither would they understand. He said, All the foundations of the earth are out of course. You know, so because we don't know we are kings, you know, because we don't know we have authority. And that authority was given to us for the gospel, to enforce the gospel. And we have a lot of people suffering around us, a lot of sick people barren people, people who are oppressed. And we are not helping them. If you want to understand what he's talking about, just think about you have a governor in a state. Poverty is on the increase. All the roads, potholes, um, uh, no job. Every area, there is no security, there is no nothing. But there is a man we voted and gave authority. Why did we vote him in? So he can use it to meet all of these needs. Every month we put billions into his hand. We are paying taxes and empowering him so he can fix the roads. Nothing is happening. How will the society feel about such a person? It gives you a small idea about how God feels when you are in a particular environment. People are dying. Nothing is happening. Yet, you are the man he put there. You are complaining about politicians. God is not looking at for politicians. He's looking at you. In your company. 
in your neighborhood, in your community, in your streets. When people are crying to God, God is saying, what about Pastor David that I placed there? What is he doing? What about this lady, Jane, that I placed there? What is she doing? All power is given for service. And Jesus has entrusted us with his kingdom to administer it for him on the earth. He put us in charge of his estate. He has purchased this universe and everything back. But he put us just like God originally put Adam to have dominion over the earth. He put us here to run his estate for him. So I'm coming back to you, Pastor Victor, because when I asked that question, I was actually thinking about society, the marketplace, and all of this. What is the implication? What are we meant to do with this office, this power, this position? Yes. What we are meant to do is to bring what Jesus had purchased to bless humanity. The corporations where you work, for example, if you, let's say you work in a bank, the bank is crying for a redeemer. You walk in a hospital, it's crying for a redeemer. Um, so it's now for us to use the power and the authority we have been given to begin to bring that redemption into the place. But, but to do that, we cannot find ourselves in the same level in practical activity. For example, if you're a police officer, you are sent to redeem the police system. You can't be found collecting bribe like they are collecting bribe. You can't be found asking, waiting, you carry. You no, can't, you can't, it can't be part of the corruption you that you are meant to change. Corruption. No, you can't become part of it. You have to rise above that. Above that. So, be, that's why Paul said in Romans chapter 12, he said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you be, be, um, re, that you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's a renewal that constantly goes on because in Hebrews 12, he said, we have received a kingdom. So even though we are in the war system, but we represent a kingdom. I work in Ministry of Education. It's not for my salary. I'm representing a kingdom. I am God's seed, God's redemption seed. He is sowing in the Ministry of Education. So I'm aware of it being aware of it. So my lifestyle, my activity, my functionality there shows that I'm a redeemer. What I don't know, I learn, I like skill and character. You know, skill and character is powerful because if you don't have the character, you can't subdue. We can only subdue on righteousness because we are in righteousness. We are the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. And as we manifest the righteousness, we subdue it. So from now on, check where you are, where you're working. Don't go back from this camp meeting as an employee, as a worker, as a doctor, just that collecting your salary by the end of the month only. No. Go there as the one in charge. In charge. You are there in charge. You, and then you begin to look for other believers who are there and get the understanding into them. Because there are millions of believers like Paul's prof said, but they don't have the understanding. The revelation is not there. We are only heaven bound. We just want to go to heaven, which is very important. We must all get there. But before we get there, there's assignment on the earth. And that assignment, you have your own where you are walking. All of us are not going to be on the same pulpit here. We have only one. It's only when the P allows you, you preach here. But you can have, you have pulpits wherever you are walking. There are pulpits. Invisible Football pulpit. feed is a pulpit. A, is a, Your company is a is pulpit. A pulpit. You have Schools a pulpit. and campuses are pulpits. Exactly. The media, the social media. Look at how we are wasting the social media. Pastor David, just Go ahead, one sir. quick last comment. Thank you so much for all this wonderful. But Pastor David, there's something you said yesterday. I don't know how many people caught it. The journey of the Christian in the last days is the journey of a martyr. If you have not accepted that I will stand for the truth 
and I may be killed in the process. If you have not come to that point, junction, you will not be effective. Because you will compromise. You will compromise. You will Sometimes compromise. you don't want to take bribe, but a group of people in the office have connived that they will take. That's it. And then you are the only odd person out. That's when what you are reading about Daniel will make sense. There are chapters you have read in the Bible. You don't, you don't feel it. But when you want to stand for righteousness like Prof is talking about, in the midst of a corrupt system, you understand what Daniel was facing. And he stood his ground and finally ended up turning around the whole place. But you see now, sometimes it's costly. Very. Okay, look at, I've left Kamiti. I'm now going as a king and a priest to my bank. And I'm coming back with that consciousness. But now MD says, I have to sleep with you. But you are a married woman. Look at a married woman now. If you want promotion. So, because you value his promotion that he will give you. You compromise everything that you are. You forget that whatever you compromise to get. You have to keep compromising to keep. And the day you stop compromising, they will take it away from you. But there is a promotion that God gives. Who told you that that man, a time is coming, it might be you that will be his MD. Today, Joseph is under Potiphar. Tomorrow, Joseph is now prime minister. Oh, Potiphar yes. is now under him. under him. So because he's the MD now, you want to compromise everything you are. Do you know that tomorrow he can be dying of cancer, that man that you are the one that will pray for him? Do you know that tomorrow that man's marriage might be cra crashing, that you are the one that will give him, cancel him and, and help him? So, but the principle is, why you say no to corruption? You have to have all that value you are bringing to the table. Yeah. Clap well, oh. Okay, corruption. I will not do. What about productivity? What about excellence in your work? What about the, this is the man that brings us the biggest investment. This is the man who always brings ideas and innovation that take the company forward. So because of that, you are irreplaceable. Even when they wanted to throw Daniel into the lions, the king fasted. The king himself fasted the whole night. He was looking for a way to get Daniel out. This is the most important asset he had in the whole government. It's not just that you have the moral stamina, the integrity, and the quality of righteousness. You must have competence, professional competence, to mix with it. That's when, no matter how. And then, who, who even says, okay, if it costs you your job, who told you you're supposed to be working for somebody? Go and start a company and beat that original company. That's why you must develop your competence to the peak. And while you're working, be building your social network, be building relationships. Because at the end of the day, what customers want is superior service. Superior value. They are not interested in. You come back to cry, Pastor. Because I said, I'm not going to get involved. The company is doing this. I, I, I said, this is against my faith. I won't get involved. But they sack me. Is that where you're crying? No. Is that what a king does? Go and start your own political party. And fight and win the election. We are not goats. We are lions. We don't cry in the jungle. We are in charge of the jungle. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? What's your last word, PCJ, before we, 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 we close? You see, there are two ascension gifts. Two. But one assignment. The assignment is the nations of the earth. Redemption of the earth. Not only the, the redemption, the saving of soul, but reclaiming God's creation transforming society and all of that but he gave us two ascension gifts one is priesthood the other is kingship he gave us anointing 
then he gave us authority so that we can get the job done tonight we are going to talk about the anointing component we are discussing authority components yes 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 sir lastly i'm going to say pastor made a statement he said authority is exercised by speaking as we meet different challenges, as we meet circumstances, as we meet sick people, as we meet oppressed people, barren people, we must learn to speak and exercise that authority. Moses had a rod in his hand and was crying to God. And God said, why are you crying to me? What do you have in your hand? Authority is not for crying. Authority is for speaking. It's not for crying. It is for speaking. There are too many crying people in Zion. It's time to rise up. You know, and begin to speak. And begin to confront issues with the authority that God has given to us. And we are going to watch them bow in our lives. And bow in the lives of the people around us. <laughs> hey. Okay. Turn to Isaiah 60 verse 21. Is an assignment. The whole chapter is writing about the church. But look at what he said in verse 21. Thy people also shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land. I think Pastor Victor just talked to us about the importance of moral values and righteousness in exercising dominion. Okay. Now, then they shall inherit the land forever. So we have also seen our domain. Our domain is the society, is the nations, is the earth. Then they are the branch of my planting, the work of my hand, that I may be glorified. Verse 22. A little one among them shall become a thousand. Everybody bring out your Bible and your paper. This is 2021. The minimum number of lives you're going to touch between now and December is a thousand. And a thousand goal is for the little ones. We're now discussing responsibility. This thing is connected to responsibility. Authority is given for responsibility. It is actually, do you know how you know who is in authority in any organization? If you want to know who is in, any, in authority in any place, ask who has the responsibility. So if I visit this man's house, your house, and I see children running around, and I want to talk to somebody with authority to put things in order, what you need to ask, whose responsibility is it to look after these kids? First person you ask for, who is the mother? The mother of these children. Authority is with that woman. Who is the father of these children? Authority is with that man. Then if you finish and these two people are not around, then you ask, who is the steward placed here to look after these kids? What if you got there, they were playing with fire? What if you got there, they were trying to jump down from three-story building? Anywhere you get to and there are problems and you want to know who actually has authority, check who is giving the responsibility. If I get to a company and the gate is open, the gate, there's supposed to be a security man, the gate is open, people are just coming in and whatever. What do you should ask? Who has the responsibility to man the gate? That is the man that has the authority. That's the person that can stop your car. The reason policemen can stop because they are also the ones giving responsibility for security in the society. For civil order. For maintaining law and order. That's why they carry the authority to arrest and to stop and to do all that. So it, you don't disconnect authority for responsibility. That's what PCJ was telling us now. We are giving this but we are giving it for a reason. The great commission, the trans this mandate, the kingdom mandate that Jesus gave us is why he gave us 
both the power of the Holy Spirit and the authority of the kingdom so we can enforce things. That's why we don't beg the devil. We don't negotiate with witches. We, don't, we are not at their mess. We are not to negotiate. We have authority over them. Police are not supposed to come and be begging you. Neither do governments. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one shall become a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Now, this prophecy was given concerning the church. The smallest people among us, a thousand, set it, write it there. This year, I'm going to touch a minimum of 1,000 lives. If we all live here now, I heard the message Brother Mike brought, and we all go with a vision of a thousand. Don't think people like me are talking about 1,000. Touching 1,000 people. That would be a joke of the century. If I tell you what is lined up for me this year, This is even where what Pastor Victor is talking about can now happen. Growing into, you, you start growing in responsibility. This year you start with 1,000. Next year you set 5,000. The other year you set 10. And you keep growing. You keep taking more. You have built two roads as governor. Build seven next. Next build 20. Next build 200. That's what you keep doing. And there are people who are here because you're not beginners in this thing. We should not go there and be talking about a thousand. Talking about how many million souls or lives you want to affect. And then write another thing. What are the strategies and the means I'm going to use to achieve this? I'm challenging every one of you. Go start something. Start a cell plant a church, start an NGO, start a club, start an organization. To go, you need a system behind that project, behind that movement. Start, you know, whatever. Don't just be doing it on a singular whatever. No, 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 no. I go to visit Motherless Baby. No, no. Start something now that can now be running that thing. Let it now become a system and a process that will always be going on. We, we started by uh, reaching young people here and there. But somewhere along the line, we now created a Golden Heart Foundation. Set a foundation going after. If it's job creation that is the area you want to intervene and use it to touch a lot of life, turn it into an institution. Take more courses and understand that very well. If it's entrepreneurship, you can consult with Tony Elumelu Foundation. Find one or two people that have worked there. Find some other organizations that are doing well and get. If it's youth development, the same thing this year will not end. And you come back to Jesus empty handed. The little one shall become a thousand. And the small one, a strong nation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Vic. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Prof. Thank you, PCJ. This is mind-boggling. Give the Lord praise, you know.